So let's uh, now really um, compute the market tightness in our model of Slack. Um, because we've said that if, we, if we're able to get our market tightness, and from that, we can get all the other variables of the model. We can figure out what they are from the relation that we've um, established when we analyze the model and from the assumptions on which we build the model. So the last step is to figure out how to get to this market tightness. So how are we going to do that? Uh, well, um, so our goal here is to determine the tightness x Because from X, we can infer all other variables in the model. All right. Um, so how are we going to compute this tightness? Well, um, basically, we have to understand a bit what are the forces that um, what are the forces that play in the model? Um, and then we'll be able to get uh, to get the tightness. So first thing we have to realize, you know, like what are the key um, what are the key decisions? Uh, what's the key decision in the model? Well, one key decision is households deciding how many services they want to purchase, you know, uh, by maximizing their utility. So that's a key decision. Okay, so that for sure is going to be one of the determinants of tightness. Um, I should say households kind of um, uh, you know, spend, spending or purchasing decision. So that's for sure is a key. That's uh, you know that's you know that's one of the key. It is in fact the key. Uh, decision that's made in the model that households that take their budget into account and they take their utility into account and they decide how much they want to uh, spend on services, how many services uh, they want to uh, purchase. That's really like, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the backbone of the model. So um, that spending purchasing decision, it's characterized by the aggregate demand curve. Uh, it tells us that the output in the model has to be uh, has to be on the aggregate demand curve because that aggregate demand curve captures the optimal spending on services by households. So we know that output is going to be given by the demand curve, which depends on tightness, and then on the price norm, which is itself a function of tightness. But that's the first element that we have to take into account. Um, so a second. Uh, important decision that uh, occurs in the model is that uh, is a decision on the number of visits that households are going to uh, to do because once a household has figured out given the tightness and given the budget how many services they want to purchase then given the tightness they are going to decide how many visits to do to shops to be able to uh, in fact purchase the amount of services they want to purchase. So that's, a, that's another key decision because they know that for a given number of visits, through the matching process, they can expect to purchase a certain number of services. So that's really the second key decision here. Uh, if you wanted their shopping decision, when they decide, they say, okay, you know, I want to, uh, get three haircuts and I know what the tightness on the uh, haircut, uh, you know, on, on the hair salon uh, market is. And so they know that they'll need to visit, you know, maybe five hair salons in a given afternoon to be able to secure uh, three haircuts, uh, you know, given the schedule of the different hairdressers. So you also have a visit or shopping decision. Um, 
that's another second key decision, okay, that we had discussed. So this is telling us that V The number of visits that household will decide will be y, the amount of output they want to purchase divided by q of x, uh, where q of x, is, q of x is a buying probability. So if we rewrite this, um, we know that the output uh, and the number of visits that the household is going to do are going to be related by y is equal to v times q of x. <coughs> so in the aggregate, number of visits and output are related as follows. Uh, Okay, however, uh, there is a last relation that we haven't mentioned earlier when we were explaining how all the variables can be backed out from tightness. And uh, that last relation that we had omitted so far, uh, we can bring it in now. It is a definition of tightness. So we know that by definition, we know that tightness is just visits divided by um, the amount of services that are supplied to the market. Uh, so this means that the number of visits, the aggregate number of visits is just tightness times the number of services uh, that are supplied to the market. So if we know the number of services that are supplied to the market, K, you know, the, cap the capacity of the economy, and if we know tightness, then we can infer uh, what is the aggregate number of visits. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Households shopping decision when I decide how many visits to do has to satisfy uh, is going to give us that once I plug in the definition of tightness, it's going to give us that output. It's going to be equal to tightness times the buying probability times the capacity. Uh, that's going to um, always be satisfied. But then do you remember this key result from uh, when we studied the matching function, there is a key link between trading probabilities and that key link is that the selling probability if f of x is equal to x times q of x, where q of x, so this one, you will remember that f is a selling probability and Q of X here, it's a buying probability. And, and this is just, um, you know, by definition of these uh, probabilities, we had established that result, uh, you know, when we studied the matching function. That's just one, because the matching function has, cons uh, you know, it's just how we define the probabilities. Uh, It's just, a, if you want, this just an accounting identity. It's really just accounting that tells us that the selling probability is x times q of x. Nevertheless, um, from this, I can rewrite, I can know that given the household shopping behavior, output has to be equal to uh, f of x times k. Okay, but f of x times k, you recognize this is just our aggregate supply. This is just telling us uh, this is just telling us the amount of services that are going to be sold given the capacities that supplied uh, to the market um, and the matching process. So this is just we recognize here our aggregate supply. And so essentially here we get this key result that uh, first of all due to households optimal purchasing decision and that's uh, that comes from uh, that comes from maximizing utility output is going to be uh, is going to be equal to the aggregate demand and furthermore due to household shopping decision and that's just and this is just governed by the matching process we know that output has to be equal to the aggregate supply. Um, and so as a result, if we combine these two things, if we combine this result here, uh, 
that outputs equal to supply, and this result here that outputs equal to demand, what, what must be necessarily uh, satisfied in the model. Well, uh, what do we always have then for model? If output is equal to demand and also equal to supply, it must be that uh, the aggregate demand curve. Oops, sorry. Aggregate demand curve at x and the price norm is always equal to the aggregate supply. Uh, and that's that. Uh, that is a key result that in the model aggregate demand is always equal to aggregate supply. But you see, this is not, you know, it's not a market clearing condition in the sense of what we have in Valrasian model. In Valrasian model, we say oh, supply, the price is always such that supply is equal to demand. Um, you know, that's because we assume that there is an auctioneer that's going to set the price such that these two things are equal. Here, there is no auctioneer at all. In fact, the price is set by price norm in bilateral relations. This is a totally different object, um, although it is framed as aggregate supply is equal to aggregate demand. This is saying that um, the fact that output is equal to aggregate demand, which we have here, This is saying that households, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, uh, choose consumption to maximize utility. And the fact that output is equal to aggregate supply, and therefore that demand is equal to supply, uh, this is just saying that um, output um, is, you know, it's going to depend on the amount of uh, services that are supplied and, uh, of course, the matching process and the number of vacancies. You know, output will have to be consistent with the fact that if there is a certain number of vacancies or visits that occur and a certain number of services that are supplied to the market, through the matching function, um, the number of purchases is going to be given by the aggregate supply. Uh, so this is basically saying that um, trades are governed by uh, by the aggregate by the matching function. And of course, of course, there's a supply side because it depends on the amount of services that are supplied to the market, on the capacity that, uh, on the capacity that, uh, on the productive capacity in the economy, uh, and capacity, of course, uh, you know the K that we have here. That's the capacity. So that's the supply element here. You have capacity that puts through um, the matching function, taking also into account. Um, the visits to give us uh, the amount of services that would be able to be sold. Trades are going by function and capacity uh, and capacity supplied to the market. Okay, and th these two things have to be true in the model at any point in time. They are always true, you know. So there's no notion that oh, if the tightness is not does not satisfy this thing, somehow tightness will have to adjust such that aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. Um, this type of like Valrasian discussion, like, you know, out of what they call out of equilibrium um, discussion and how the price would be adjusted to get to equilibrium. Here, there's, there's none of that. You know, here is just always true by construction that this aggregate supply that we define and this aggregate demand that we define are always equal. Um, 
no, in the model, they have to be equal when we solve the model. Um, and this equality between demand and supply, that's what will determine our market tightness. The market tightness that solves the model and the market tightness that equalizes demand and supply. But you know, the market tightness is not determined by some kind of auctioneer that sets the market. You know, the market tightness, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a real uh, quantity that's determined by the behavior of each individual agent. It's determined by the visits from the households and it's also determined by um, the capacity that the household supplies the market. You know, it's, there's no auctioneer that just sets that tightness in some abstract way and then people behave by not that. No, it's just this tightness is uh, obtained from the aggregation of the individual behavior of each household as buyer and each household as seller. Uh, but in the model, um, so mod, you know, given the structure of the model, it tells us that yes, the tightness that will arise from this model, given the utility that we've assumed and the endowment and you know the capacity that they and the shape of the matching function, the tightness will be so that demand is equal to supply. And so you can compute the tightness uh, by solving this de aggregate demand equal aggregate supply equation. So that's the key thing. Tightness x is computing by solving the, you know, AD of x equal AS of x equation that we have above. Now, of course, um, here, I'm not going to solve that equation because you can see that uh, although we have a functional form for the supply, a functional form for the demand, um, the properties of this equation and therefore the solution to the equation will depend on the price norm, uh, Pn of x that we have here. And so what we'll do next to study the model is that we'll look at different possible assumptions on the price norm. And for this different assumption, we'll write down the equation aggregate demand equal aggregate supply and we'll solve the tightness that comes out for this different price norm. And so we'll solve it, we'll solve that algebraically, we'll also solve it graphically, and then we'll study the properties of the model under different price norms. But now what we've just showed is that for whatever the price norm is, um, the way you will solve the model is that first you will uh, write down aggregate demand equal aggregate supply, taking the price norm into account. You will figure out what the tightness is, and then you can, uh, you know, looking at what we've done before, we can then plug in that tightness and figure out all the other variables. Um, so we need to specify <coughs> a price norm. Pn of x uh, first. And what we'll see is that we obtain <coughs> different x and different properties. for different price norms. Uh, and so that's the next step now that we've understood the general structure of the model is make these different assumptions and then see how the model works. And we'll see that actually you can, uh, you have a rich set of, of, uh, of behaviors that, can, that you can obtain with your model by making different uh, assumptions on the price norm. Um, 